Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be going over the best bases for MMA. But unlike the other video where I did, where we went through, you know, like normal things like wrestling, boxing, and judo. Well, judo's gonna be on here too, but a for a very different reason. We're gonna be going over the bases for MMA that are pretty cursed, okay? Like, this is the stuff that we're not gonna be bringing up on Sports Center, and we probably won't even be bringing this up at a press conference unless it's for Son Strickland. Everything from autism to inbreeding to Dana White privilege. We're gonna put them into a tier list, S tier being the absolute most effective, or in some cases most cursed, D tier being either very ineffective or pretty normal. Like, you'll understand the scoring criteria halfway through the video. With that out of the way, let's get started. Number one, we're, we're gonna start in hot. We're gonna start off with autism. Listen, tism is a little bit of a PD in and of itself. Like, in all seriousness, there is a really strong correlation between people that are on the spectrum and people that can obsess over this. Like, it's a real thing. In jujitsu, it's a real thing. And for that reason, as far as just being effective. Granted, like, if you go too far one way, too far the other way, you're gonna get diminishing returns. I'm gonna say it's a solid B tier. If you got just a little bit of it, we're in that John Jones level, okay? So yeah, I think a solid B tier for autism, maybe an A tier, just definitely not an S tier. Next up, inbreeding. Okay. Inbreeding by itself is probably going to be a D tier. However, if you combine it with other things, like wrestling and religion, you will do very well. Again, I'm actually, I'm probably going to put it in our A tier, just because you have around like a 20 to 50% chance of getting like a plus 3 strength stab, or like a plus 50 grip strength. You're going to understand in a moment. Next up. How, how do I say this without getting flicked? Having a bad dad. You look at the photo and, and, and you can understand what I'm trying to say. Probably the two greatest examples of this is going to be Sean Strickland and Joe Pfeiffer. Joe Pfeiffer is a ginzer that broke the Francis Ngannou punch record three times in a row. So yeah, I think he broke it, guys. Yeah, I'm going to say... It's only 50% effective. That's the problem here. You either are so destroyed by it to the point that you just aren't really going to do much, or you're going to turn in the Sean Strickland and you're going to use that fire to do great things. In that aspect, it's going to be in the same level as just having autism. It's like 50% effective, just not quite to our A tier yet. Yeah, I think this is a pretty fair location, just, on, just behind the tism. Bullying. I think everybody who's in combat sports has been bullied. Like, that's a genuine thing. I don't think there's a single person that has ever gotten into combat sports, wrestling, boxing, jiu-jitsu, any of it, that hasn't been bullied at one point in their life. Everybody has a story. And for the fact that everybody has it, honestly, it's probably a perfect C tier just because it's so common yeah, no, no, it's, it's it's just too common for it. Like, I, I can't I can't justify putting it up here because it's hard to see the effects of it without a, contributing to it to, like... Yeah, no, no, C tier, C tier. Poverty. That This is another one, but I think poverty goes above bullying. I know they go hand in hand, but at the same time, there's something about the fire that you get from being impoverished. That makes you want to chase after that. Like, it's the hunger that it gives you. No, actually, the more I think of that, honestly, this is more deserve. This is deserving of an A tier spot. Yeah, no, more I think about it, yeah, no, we're going an A tier. It, it links well with everything else on this list. If you have all of these, you are going to be a UFC champion one day. I guarantee you, and I... Yeah, no. Judo. D tier. Listen... Judo is one of the few martial arts that actually works better than women's MMA. And there's, a, like, real reasoning behind that. But in men's MMA, unless you've coupled it with, like, wrestling or jiu-jitsu, it's just not that good. I didn't rank it that high when it came to the actual base tier list. It's more complimentary than anything. If you just come from judo, if you're just a judo world champion, the fact is, this is, this is how crazy it is. Kayla Harrison is a two-time gold medalist in judo. We think she's going to be pretty good in MMA. 
If there was a two-time gold medalist in judo going in the men's MMA, we would be like, okay, good luck. We're going to spam double legs at you, and we're going to get you on your back, and we're going to win. So yeah, for that reason, it goes in D tier. It's just really only super effective in women's MMA. Child labor. Best example of this is Francis Ngannou. <sighs> I'm, yeah, I know. Francis Ngannou, it goes very hand-in-hand -hand with poverty, bullying. Yeah, I would actually put it above there. It's just behind just behind autism. Easily a B tier. And for our S tier, we're going to find our S tier at the very end when we have everything on the list. So there's not one of these that's going to make it the S tier. I just don't want to spoil it. Next up, being a criminal. Best examples of this are probably going to be... Actually, there's lots. Chael Sonnen, Conor McGregor, John Jones. A lot of the roster has criminal charges. I mean, it's more complimentary of anything, but at the same time, it's a good indicator for a person that has that dog in them. Again, not advocating for any of these, and if you ask, this is a character. <sighs> Being a crim... <sighs> this is difficult. I'm gonna say C, just because it's more linked to these and not the causation of these. Like, if you come from poverty, you're probably going to get bullied. If you're in this, you're probably going to be a criminal. Yeah, all of it. If you have autism, you're probably going to get bullied. And that's going to fuel your drive to know how to fight. Steroids. If you did steroids before training MMA, it's a D tier. If you did it as you're doing it, like if we have a TRT VTOR situation, then then we're going to get into that A, no, high B to low A tier. But if it's just your base, then in that case, it's just not going to be that good. It just doesn't work as well. Deviative septum. You ever, you ever see those like, uh, you ever go to Dunham's or Dick's Sporting Goods and you see like those training masks that like restrict your flow of oxygen? And then that came out that that turned out to be like a huge scam that somebody made millions of dollars on that's a deviated septum but there is something to no, like breathing less oxygen that when you finally can breathe more oxygen you're just better look at Dricus Duplessis there's more fighters that have had this Joe Rogan won't shut up about his deviated septum and how much his life changed when he got it fixed and for that reason I'm probably going to say a very low C tier. If you go into MMA with a deviated septum and you get that corrected halfway through your career, if you have one of these other things to help you out, then you're going to be pretty good. Steven Seagal. Like, this is Steven Seagal slash Aikido. Aikido was on the last one. I'm going to put this, and the reason why he's even on here, is Steven Seagal says that the reason that Anderson Silva was able to win, I believe, his fight with Ritz Franklin is because Steven Seagal taught him some, like, secret Aikido moves. I'm not even kidding. I'm going to say Steven Seagal... I mean, you kind of have to put him in a D tier. That's kind of just why I brought him along. We needed more D tiers because all of these were kind of guaranteed to be higher. Dana White Privilege. Dana White privilege. If you come into the UFC with it, you are guaranteed a winning record until you get into the rankings. Like pretty like pretty much. I mean, look at Son O'Malley. Outside of losing to Cheeto Vera, who then became a superstar because they were kind they kind of needed to do that to justify the hype of Son O'Malley. Like, you did pretty well. Connor McGregor, Dana White privilege, Darren Till. They just forced him to a title shot too early. If they didn't give him Tyron Woodley, I think he would have done pretty well. I'm going to say Dana White Privilege is probably probably the lowest. This is going to be the lowest of the B tier. That's how I'm going to judge what goes in B tier from a, um, C tier. Now, this is where we're going to get pretty controversial. Islam. Listen, I, I got two religions here, so like I'm not targeting any. This one, this has to go with other stuff on this list for it to be effective. If you mix Islam with inbreeding with poverty, you have a future UFC champion. Like, I, bro, look at the entirety of the Dagestani crew. That's what you get. By itself, however, it's going to be a very high C tier. Very high C tier. 
Just, it needs to go with other things to be considered a UFC champion. If you could combine these, oh, 100%. S tier all day. Christianity. Okay, now I can go off on this one. We got John Jones. We technically have Connor. We have Charles. We have a few other ones, but th I think those are our winners here. We have Piotr Jan. Piotr Jan's one of us too. But that one you also got to mix with poverty. Like Charles Oliveira came from the Vavellas. Um John Jones has a coke addiction. And probably autism. Probably autism. I'm going to say it's probably just with being Muslim. I think both of these together are around the same thing. But again, you have to couple these with other things to be effective. But if I'm going to be objective here, this probably wouldn't be S tier unless you combine Christianity with autism, with a coke addiction, with a little bit of inbreeding. Just a little bit. Like a little smidgen to get that grip strength up. Coke addiction. I've already said this earlier. How is coke not, con like, real talk, how is cocaine not considered a PED? Like, I, I, I'm not an expert on how you would test for it, but at the same time, if you have John Jones saying, I beat you off a weekend of doing coke, I thought cocaine was a sti stimulant. Like, I know in MLB, you're not allowed to take certain ADHD medication because it helps you focus too much. And I, I'm probably going to sound super ignorant right now, but I would think cocaine would do a very similar thing. Like, I know a lot of guys that train jiu-jitsu that take speed to, like, to get that little bit of oomph in their training. I think cocaine, like, chemically is pretty similar to that. It's above deviated septum. It's above being a criminal. But if you lived a good life and you just do cocaine, you're just a normal rich guy. But if you mix bullying in there... Nah. Nah. It has to be beneath bullying. Bullying is the catalyst for all of these things. Surfing. The reason surfing's on here is that the Gracies believed that, like, their mentality towards jiu-jitsu... This is from their book, by the way. Their mentality towards training jiu-jitsu came from looking at the waves and surfing them. Uh, and there's still a lot of, like, people that grapple that surf. Like, there, it's a really weird correlation. And there's a correlation with something else on this list that we'll get to in a second... But surfing by itself, also Luke Rockhold, Luke Rockhold was a surfer, very, very low D tier, but I would say surfing is above Aikido. If you're a surfer, I respect you more as a person than somebody that trains Aikido. Mushrooms. To be more specific, psilocybin. This is the correlation that I was talking about. Another thing that in their book, it's called Breathe by Hicks and Gracie, that he talked about that their family was like... It was kind of normal. And there's a lot of things that the Gracies did that were, are fucking wild. Like, they they believed in breeding the best athlete. Like, every Gracie had two wives at least. They had a wife that they loved. And then they had, like, some Amazonian woman that they would actually breed children with. Like, before the NBA did it, the Gracies were doing it for decades. But back to it. They also believed in doing mushroom surfing to get better at their jujitsu. They also believed in a lot of reincarnate. Like, the, that might be a whole new video just discussing the, like, the the mantras of the Gracie clan. Like, it is so, so wild nowadays. Again, but by itself, like, if you combine a little bit of mushrooms, a little bit of surfing, just a smidgen of Jesus, and a whole lot of autism, you are a world champion. Like, you can... If you can, you can make a ton of UFC fighters here. Like, if I wanted to make Khabib, I'd do a little bit of Islam. Actually, probably a lot of Islam. A lot of Islam, a smidgen of autism, a tiny bit of child labor. Poverty. Poverty. And inbreeding. And then we got an S tier, probably one of the best lightweights to ever live, if not the greatest lightweight to ever live. That's how you make them. Alcoholism. Best examples, Conor McGregor, John Jones, Poetan, and a lot of others, but those are the best examples. Alex Pereira even said that it wasn't until he started his MMA career that he finally, like, swore off alcohol, which is wild. Bro became the first person to get inducted in the Glory Kickboxing Hall of Fame while in the alcohol. He was an alcoholic by the time he was 
15, I believe, because he was working at a tire shop and he would just drink an entire bottle of, I believe it was like Brazilian vodka throughout a day. Like, he, even he's surprised that he's not dead. But again, that's more child labor and poverty, if anything. And the Smith's in a tism. Pereira's definitely has a little bit on that tism. By itself, it's actually probably the worst for you. I still respect them more than Akito, though. Like, this by itself is terrible. Now, last one, before we choose our S tier, is going to be you, the any UFC video game. Max Holloway said he learned his striking from playing UFC Undisputed. There's videos of Khabib Nurmagomedov learning the names of UFC fighters from playing those old UFC games. Hanato Moicano learned a lot of his grappling transitions from grappling in those games. There's a lot of people, including myself, that our first little introduction to MMA was through playing video games. Like, it's not... It, don't be ashamed to admit it. That's most, most of us in this generation. And for that reason... Yep. I mean, you can't deny results here. I'm going to put it above being a criminal, above a deviated symptom, just beneath bullying. If you combine these two, you're probably going to get into a B tier. And now, we are going to choose the best base for MMA, Cursed Edison. Our two finalists is inbreeding and poverty. And I do believe... After doing the rest of this list and the combinations of making the goats of MMA, and you either need inbreeding, poverty, or both to become the goat, I'm going to say poverty is our S tier. Yes, I know. And before you storm the comments and start spamming the Dagestani crew, like that's the greatest example, let me just remind you, very few UFC fighters do that haven't come from poverty have become UFC champions. Leon Edwards, another one. Conor McGregor, welfare. Like, honestly, I do believe most of... Anderson Silva, favelas. Charles Oliveira, favelas. There's very few that actually came from a good financial background that had become UFC champions. I would say being Ritz is probably the worst base in MMA behind Aikido. The only person I can name off the top of my head that came from money and became a UFC champion would probably be Luke Rockhold. And he was beaten by Michael Bisbing, who came from poverty. So yeah, poverty is the all-around best base for MMA. You have to combine it with any one of these and you will get a guaranteed UFC champion. Thank you all. If you think there's something that I left out, something that should be on this list, or you just disagree with one of my opinions, which there's probably going to be a lot of you, go in the comment section below and tell me why I'm wrong. But if you enjoy this content, please consider a like, comment, subscribe. I try to make content every day to every other day. We're just pretty barren with news. Thank you guys for watching. It means a lot to me. Adios, guys.